come out of it and you're more convicted yeah. of what you're doing. And I think we need to go through those phases. And of course, there will be people who go through those phases and then they fall out. They they don't come out of, of this. But those who do, I think your conviction and your passion for what you believe in is stronger than before. Conversations. My name is Ali, a former performer and creative director, and lifestyle and wellness entrepreneur. Now, each week I bring to you a conversation with a person who I believe has a message to share with us as we dive deeper into the world of wellness and mindset and answer this big question what makes a great life. Thank you so much for spending some time with me here today. Now, in this call, I have a passionate entrepreneur who has ventured out of Singapore and made an impact on the community in Cambodia. She has based herself uh, there since 2013, and I'm interested to know what keeps her going. In fact, it's good to reconnect with this lady here today because we were classmates back when we were in junior college uh, ages ago. And I can't wait to get this conversation going because I know there'll be plenty of topics to uncover from entrepreneurship to mindset and wellness. So uh, let's dive straight. Yeah? Let's welcome Melissa into the show. Hey, Melissa, how are you doing there? Hello. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. How's Cambodia? It's good. For the record, I just want to share as well that, um, like, like Alvi said just now, we were college uh, friends, you know, during the geeky days. And to see him <laughs> develop into the entrepreneur that he is now, I'm very excited. And it's quite amazing that we've kept in touch throughout the years. Um, I like to believe that it's our values, it's similar mindsets and things like that that keeps us you know, having a discussion and conversation and keeping this friendship together. So I really want to congratulate him. I want to congratulate you, Avi, for everything that you've done, uh, you know, for building uh, this branding and for helping people. I think whatever that you're doing is just making an impact on the people around you. And I think, and I know that your coaches are amazing. I see them congratulating you and, you know, encouraging and affirming you. But I think from an outside point of view that I'm looking in, I just want to say that um, it's amazing what you're doing. A lot of entrepreneurs start out wanting to to make it a business and wanting to make money but to be able to contribute to community and help people and at the same time uh be able to you know make a living and be sustainable i think that's just the best of both worlds so yeah good job and i'm very excited to see uh how you can grow and expand this and uh, when you get famous please don't forget me <laughs> No, but really, uh, it, it's, it's interesting how our path uh, brought us to where we are today, you yeah. know, uh, and, and, and entrepreneurship is something that uh, is not quite common in Singapore, because in the way that we are brought up in Singapore, yes. you know, one thing is that yes. I want to be an entrepreneur. Yeah, I want yes. to be a doctor, I want to be a teacher, I want to be uh, an engineer, but entrepreneur, not so much. And you took yourself out of Singapore, and that's even, you know, a bigger thing. Why? Um, I just want to know what drives you uh, to take yourself out of the Singapore workforce or so uh, to be an entrepreneur in Cambodia. I think nobody starts out with that big title. Maybe other people have, but I definitely did not. I was just an average person, you know, who finished uh, university, came out to work, followed the normal path that everybody did. And if you were to ask me back then, right, hey, have you considered being an entrepreneur, starting your own business? I'm like, oh no, it's too scary, it's too big. And I think that's what scares a lot of people. Like, you put this big thing in front of them, right, and they're like, no, I don't think I can do it. I, and I think as cliche as it sounds, I almost fell into it. So I first came to Cambodia because I was exploring community development, um, I wanted to understand more about anti-human trafficking. Coming from Singapore, you know, until I was 30 years old, I had no clue what anti-human trafficking is about. And people are studying it and doing all these things. And I'm like, what? Nah? Like, I, I really am so in my bubble in Singapore that I haven't seen any of this. And so I went to the Thai-Cambodian border, the city of Bai Bat, right? And I... Um, volunteered with an NGO and I volunteered with a church and I just started to to look at issues and you started to get out there and explore all of this and then I realized that um, charity and whatever that I was doing never helped anybody never helped any family or any person or any nation it's the economy it's the economy that helps people like Singapore got out of where we were from a you know fishing village to 
to where we are now, it's really just mm-hmm. capitalism, it's the economy, it's people working hard, it's people doing business that made this possible. Charity never helps anybody. And so I said in Cambodia, Cambodia is the second country with the highest number of NGOs, Phnom Penh, you know, in, in the in the world, that kind of thing. Why are there so many NGOs here? We are all giving handouts. Um, but has Cambodia really improved or did better? Not really, but it's not sustainable, right? So it's business. And then I said that I really wanted to help these people. Like these people became my friends. So I think it was all relationship based. And I, I'm standing here, I'm looking at them, I'm saying that it's compassion, it's I don't know, like I really wanna I really wanna help you as a friend and I really want to help this city or this nation. Now what can I do? And then I dabbled in micro businesses, micro financing. When I first started, I tell you, I got nothing back. It was a total failure. It was a complete mess. I loaned like very small money, like $1,000 to start like a food cart business, you know. All I got back was plates and pots and pans. Because they were like, sister, I'm very tired. I don't want to do this anymore. Like, huh? yeah. And so they couldn't repay me the money, right? Like $1,000, right? So I got plates and pots and pens, uh, that kind of thing. So it was, it was terrible. Um, but I, I learned along the way and, and I just tried and failed and tried and failed and tried and failed. And uh, I wouldn't say I found a strategy that works. I think part of development is that you just keep, it's development. Like you will never find the answer or you never find the key to solving the problems but you keep building on whatever that you have and it just keeps getting better. And I like to see that's progress. Uh, And I guess as long as there's something for me to do here, I will stay. (laughs) (laughs) I think relationships, relationships, I think over the years I've just built relationships and you've just built something um, with the community. And uh, anyway, I like Cambodia. How's Cambodia during this period of time? It is, um, we always say that compared to Singapore, it's, a safer place and there's more freedom here for sure. I mean, <laughs> as of today, we have only about less than 250 reported cases and uh, we've never had lockdowns. We've never had. Wow. There were moments where people got scared and so everybody was rushing to the supermarkets and stocking up and my friends were telling me, buy rice, buy rice, buy canned food, buy canned food. Um, but Nothing, nothing really happened. Seeing your Insta stories, you're you enjoying yourself, going to Cambodia. <laughs> Everyone's enjoying their life in Cambodia. <laughs> so bad because I keep going out, right? People tell me yeah. that and I'm like, then I just have to say that we're just two different countries. Yes, yeah, it's just yeah. different. Um, yeah, but you guys are survivors, seriously. If I was in Singapore and I was in lockdown for a month, like I will, I don't know what I will do to myself. I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying myself in during this lockdown period. For you, like new things just keep coming up. I like, just keep having new ideas, and you just keep thinking all that. That's amazing, man. That's the heartbeat of an entrepreneur that you just want to keep yourself going. There's never really quite a, a destination per se that you reach, no. but rather it's like I say, it's always a journey that you keep moving forward how else can you get yourself better and you 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 showed us earlier on that you just keep on going finding solutions finding that answer that that can satisfy you and you know uh i just want to quote simon sinek okay he's our favorite uh philosopher yeah i know (laughs) know. simon sinek Sinek says that uh, we must start with our why first yeah Yeah. Uh, our why is going to be the roadmap uh, for any individual or businesses to be innovative, uh, to take risks, and for us to continue, keep on repeating what we are doing and, and hopefully find that success. And so, Melissa, what is your why? Have you figured out your why in what you're doing right now? I think it also keeps changing along the way, but if I were to put it in words, there is two parts. Like my own personal thing is that... Um, I always tell myself that every meeting that I go to, every conversation, every house that I visit or whatever, right, I want to bring something to the table. Like I want to be able to make a difference so that when I leave, something has changed for the other person. Uh, Like 
I want to leave them with something positive, like if it's an encouragement and inspiration, or even if they feel happier or they feel better than they had come in before than before they had come into it. Uh, that's something that I purposefully want to do. Um, but the bigger picture being in uh, the corporate sector in Cambodia, being in business and you know doing business, um, I want to demonstrate um, justice in business. And I know it's a very big word. And like what Simon Sinek says, like what you say, right? I always tell, tell people I will die trying, period. I, last year, in fact, it just happened last year, I felt very disappointed with everything that's happening in Cambodia uh, in terms of the business. I, I felt that the bad guys are winning. Very cliche. Um, but I felt that honesty just doesn't get us anywhere. And I have a small group of like, entrepreneurial friends like we do micro small businesses and they're my friends because they want to do business with honesty and integrity and sometimes we feel very defeated you know we'll sit down there have coffee and we're like why are we doing this why because corruption is so rampant because um it seems like the bad guys are winning. Lah. If you have money, like you have money, you have the advantage, you get what you want. You know, we we are the disadvantaged ones, yet we cannot seem to make a business work for us. Even. And so I was like, wow, forget it. Lah. I felt like, I, and, and you know, my friend told me to go and print this t-shirt. It's called Xie Bu Shen Zhen in Mandarin. <laughs> okay. It means okay. that good will not triumph over evil. Oh. Not those kung fu <laughs> things, right? And he's like, hey, you better go and print a t-shirt and wear it every day. Yeah? Um, but it was a good... Everybody will go through that phase, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody will go through moments where you sit down and you're like, I think I want to give up really. Like, I can't do this anymore. Um, it's good. I, I encourage this. But they make you think and you come out of it and you're more convicted of what you're doing. And I think we need to go through those phases. And of course, there will be people who go through those phases and then they fall out. They they don't come out of, of this. But those who do, I think your conviction and your passion for what you believe in is stronger than before. Uh, it's true what you say. Uh, and I like that quote, I would die trying. At yeah. least you have done something with your life rather than step out of the comfort zone and experience life or for what life has to offer. Because yes, we can take everything uh, and we can just exist or we can just float. Yeah. But how exciting can life be when you face the challenges, when you come out of the feelings and you taste success and that success comes with a lot of feelings and that is uh, I think that is a priceless thing and you talk about the challenges that you face and you say that you know at one point you feel like giving up and your yeah. friend says that you need to print that t-shirt to remind yourself I, I think uh, your friend was telling you to just to remind you that don't give up yes what, yes what what's your approach or what's your mindset principle that you have to keep you on track with what you need uh, to get or to get to where you need to go to um, like what you said just now right like we don't just exist like we I think we need to believe that we've got value and we do contribute to something and sometimes we cannot see the success or we cannot see what's ahead but I like to think in terms of progress and I always tell people as well you know there are people who say that Cambodia will never get out of whatever situation that they're in, you know, like we work so hard for education, but education here still has got no value, you know, like our schools are going to close till November. The kids will not have gone to school for a year. Wow. Almost a year. Yeah. And nobody cares. And I will tell them that if you look at Cambodia today versus Cambodia last year, five years ago, 10 years ago, we have progress. And that's good. And that's all we need. Like, you just need, like what, like what, I think we've had conversations like this before, right? Like exercise is a, is a daily thing. Mm. It's not, I go to the gym today and tomorrow I'm like, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> like one year later, when you look back, you're like, hey, I have progressed. I have come so far. 
And so I, I believe that. That means like, I'm not superwoman. I'm not here to do big things. I'm not here to, you know, transform whatever, whatever, whatever. But I have a small role and I have something that I want to contribute and I do that. And and other people add on to it and we progress. In fact, I tell my coaches, you know, you have put on that weight for the last 30 years. You can't expect to lose that weight within three months, right? <laughs> Likewise, when we do a, a project, you're not going to see it in fruition within a short period of time. Yeah. Uh, so that little step towards uh, progression is uh, something that we need to celebrate. And I don't think people celebrate yeah. that enough. Yes, yeah. correct. We, we beat ourselves too much saying that, oh, it's not good enough. Oh, I, I didn't achieve this. But, you know, when we say all these things, then, you know, the universe is going to yeah. give you what you're saying. You know, I do believe uh, that we need to uh, acknowledge uh, the little things that we have done to celebrate. Uh, we don't celebrate enough. Yeah. And I also want to go back to what you were talking about. Like you are also a very big fan of the start with why and know your why, right? I think that once you know your why, then external circumstances don't affect us as much. Um, and this is something that I learned the hard way. And and I won't say that I have succeeded in learning that. I think that I'm a work in progress. I think a lot of us are work in progress, but it gets better every time. That something that I learned almost like 20 years ago. Um, is this phrase that says that I have I should live my life with nothing to prove and nothing to hide and and everything that I do right is for my why is towards my own goal because what am I trying to tell the world what am I trying to show I don't want to do things where I'm trying to prove you something or I'm trying to tell you hey look at me you know I'm, I'm good enough no I just do whatever I can and I come home satisfied uh, I find meaning in the things that I do. Um, yeah, I don't need to show you anything. I don't need to tell you anything. And you don't need to give me accolades and awards and whatever. I mean, if it comes, great. If it doesn't, it's not. But it's just it's just about my why. The intrinsic value that you have uh, that is guiding you towards yeah. what... You're not you're dependent doing. on the applause of men or you're not depending on other factors. So, uh, like I said, so if something makes you upset or takes you back, two steps mm-hmm. from achieving your goal, right? It's okay. Just keep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going. Yeah. You know, you've been there for almost seven years already. Wow, time yeah. flies. 2013 yeah. now. 2020. <laughs> but 2020 is still. <laughs> That's true. Reset. <laughs> Where do you see yourself the next five to ten years? Do you have a vision? Honestly, I if, if you're asking me according to geography and all that, then no, I'm very open to anything and everything. Like I, I just know that um I know that at the end of the day, wherever I go, that my why or what I'm doing is the same. Like I want to um encourage and empower people around me. I, I feel like um where whatever situation that I go into, as long as we have eyes to see. Uh, we can find gaps and we can find things to do. Sometimes I tell people last time, right, that I'm the capo and I am the, the have nothing to do, I will go and dig and find something to do. Then later, somebody can tell me, no, 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 it's because you are uh, self-initiated. Okay, thank you. You're inquisitive. <laughs> I think every time you go into a situation, right, you'll be like, hey, that can be better. Yeah, I can find a more effective way of doing this. Or like, oh no, like something bad has happened. Like, what can I do to, you know, salvage the situation? Or what can I do? To... And I think you're constantly, you're, you're, you're constantly switched on in that sense. Yeah, Sometimes I tell myself, yeah, hey, yeah. stop it lah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the hallmark of an entrepreneur. Always looking for solutions to provide for any problem. Um, I don't know where I will be. Um, like I said, I like Cambodia a lot. I, I don't see this as a, a, a job. I see this as a life. Like, I live here. I've got friends. I know which supermarket sells the cheapest things. <laughs> um, but, of course, there are other considerations. Uh, my parents are in Singapore. My sister is in Australia. Um, you know, once in a while, I'm like, eh, why the HDB? Ah? There are things that will come at you. Lah. So, I'm not saying that I'm uh, I'm exempt from these kind of things, okay? But um, I I don't allow this to stop me from still achieving what I want to do. I Maybe I'm very idealistic, lah, but I want to do both. 
uh, I want to balance practical things with not giving up my my goals and my dreams and what I want to do. So I always tell people that uh, I'm here. Uh, my sister is not in Singapore, so my sister is in Australia. But anytime my parents need me, I'm there. Mm-hmm. Right? Like yeah. if my if anything should happen, right, I'm back in Singapore. Like no questions asked. Mm-hmm. But in the meantime, I cannot let all these things stop me from doing what I need to do. So like if an opportunity arises, um, I don't know, somebody comes up to me and say, hey, there's a HDB here. Do you want to buy it or not? For your future, rent out, make passive income, whatever. Okay. If something like that happens, right? Yeah, I'll do it. But you ask me now to sit in front of the of the computer and start looking at HDB, maybe not lah. But <laughs> I think we can, I think we can, we can be practical and yes. at the same time not give up on our dreams and and I don't want to you know I think you will have the same feeling like I don't want to get to 60 and then say like when when I retire that's when life starts no la. <laughs> right like we this, like, life is now life is now life is now life is continuously going uh, there's never yeah. a retire moment yeah and I like to say that um, you know, like with you and with uh, a few of our friends from college and all that, I really think that we don't follow typical stereotypes. And that's why I enjoy having conversations with you. I think we have, and I, and I have to say, it takes a lot of courage to step out and say we don't allow stereotypes to dictate what we do. Yeah, I want to add on right after college, uh, uh, at a time where I was finding what's my path. I picked up this book. Uh, it's a chick flick. Uh, it's called Don't Ask Me Why by Tanya Kindersley. I still remember the book title. Yeah, and man. Author. Definitely impacted your life. <laughs> it impacted me so much because of the central theme uh, whereby it says, if you stop dreaming, do you stop leading? I do not fully understand where I'm going to also. Uh, but I think that's the exciting thing about it is that yes, life yes, is yes. a journey of discovery. Yes. yes. So that was the impact that the, the book had on me. Melissa, do you have anyone or anything or any influences that, that shaped you, who you are, perhaps a mentor? Yes, for sure. I think that I actually encourage all my friends to find mentors. Um to get someone to come around you. Uh, when I first started, of course, I wish that my mentors were closer to me, but they're not. Uh, when I first started my journey, when I first started my journey in Cambodia, uh, I volunteered with an NGO, and I'm still with this um, organization now. It's based in Canada. Uh, the director of the NGO came up to me and asked me if I wanted to be an ambassador for them. I'm like, oh, what does that mean? Like, what do I do? You know, that kind of thing. But I said yes, and we started a relationship. And he he's in he's in Canada, and so we will just email, like we'll call, and we'll chat, and all that kind of thing. But the thing about mentors, right, is that, and I never realized this until a couple years later, is that they believe in you. And, uh. and he doesn't, we don't communicate a lot, obviously. The time difference alone is difficult. Um, but... Every time I chat with him, he speaks to me, uh, and he's older than my dad, he's older than my parents, but he speaks to me with that kind of respect, with that kind of, um, it's like he trusts me to know what I'm doing, and he's only there to provide uh, uh, guidance, like he's just there to put certain boundaries in place, but he's not talking to me as though I'm a 20 year old kid who doesn't know anything. And I think we sense that. We sense that we want to talk to people who who, who help us, but yet, uh, and he he he's he's amazing because he always says that we hold things. Uh, everything in life, there is tension. There must be tension. And, and it's about balancing this tension, the pull and the push of certain things that happens. Um, and so he's really smart. Ralph, I want to give a shout out to him. He's really smart. I learned a lot of things about community development um, and just life uh, from him. Um, and it works both ways. And so whenever he's in Cambodia, he will always tell people, I'm the boss. 
you know, like he's like, she has my schedule, she has my plan. And he'll ask me like, um, what do the people here need or what do they want? Or what's the sentiment on the ground or where to go, or what to do. And he's, way older he's got so much more experience he is so smart we always call him a walking encyclopedia and yet when he comes into so-called like when he comes into my space he has that kind of humility and that respect to say what do you think and so i think mentorship is also very two ways um Mm -hmm. and i learned a lot about life from him and he shares a lot of life with me so um you know even in my personal relationships um with family with things like that it's very, very holistic. And yeah, I mean, like, I'm so for, for mentors, for sure. And then, of course, you have mentors who don't mentor you personally, per se, like Simon Sinek. I mean, we all know that he's almost like a mentor to us in that we glean from him and we can, you know, practice the things that he says and stuff like that. So I listen to uh, Simon Sinek. I listen to Brene Brown a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's, a, there's a rabbi that I listen to, Rabbi Daniel Lapin. He talks about Jewish principles for life. I like that thing that you said that sometimes people believe in us more than we believe in ourselves because they can see what we are worth and they're just there to push us. But if we, then, if we don't push ourselves and we don't take that step, nothing will happen, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, if I might quote Simon Sinek as well, courage is external. Courage mm. is not internal. And I also agree that it's because like mentors or it's because your peers or because somebody gave you that environment and gave you that space to step into it and so that you have the courage to do it. And then if you fail, you're in like the environment still can have you. Like you're not yeah. judged or you're not condemned. Uh, for, for that and I think that's the that's the part that that's very important I think we, we don't do that enough and I wish that I wish more um, Asian parents if I might say you know like I wish that more Asians would um, actually allow people to fail uh, mm. allow people to just step out and do something that's not the norm and if it works out great if it doesn't that's life uh, yeah. and I wish that more parents and more peers will actually believe in other people and actually verbalize it. Uh, we're not very good at communicating. I, I totally agree. Gratitude is something that I always talk about in this show and early in the morning when I wake up, uh, the first thing I will do is to say thank you. And I would uh, literally write down uh, in a journal. I have a bullet journal that I write down every day the uh, three things that I'm grateful wow. for. Um, do you practice that? And, and what are you grateful for in your life? Yes, definitely. I I'm, I agree with you 100% um, gratitude. And I, firstly, being in Cambodia, being here, I, I, I always tell people that I feel that I'm at the best um, place and the best time in my life right now. Like, I couldn't have asked for more, you know. I think it's great. Everything is 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 great. Like I'm happy. I love my job. I have good friends. Uh, I have mentors. Um, my family is well. Um, my parents are healthy. Um, I I feel like I'm just in a very good space right now, and uh, I I'm at a place where I know what my strengths are. I know what my values are. I know what I I want in life. To me, gratitude to me is just not complaining. Uh, I, I wake up and I appreciate certain things and and you know to be honest in Cambodia there's a lot of things to complain about if you really wanted to when you pick every single thing um, but I, I don't I just think that it's uh, I, I'm happy to be here and I always tell people that I at the end of the day I have to remember I'm a foreigner this is not my country you know but thank you for allowing me to come and doing what uh, I can do here you don't have to I you can just kick me out and I can go home tomorrow. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm really grateful um, to be released to do what I can do. Um, honestly, I don't know what my parents are thinking sometimes, but I know it must be very difficult for them to say, to have a daughter leave and come to this cowboy town. And, uh, and I've had my fair share of... Um, and when I say it's difficult in Cambodia, I, I think... 
you know, I have, I mean, I don't want to scare people, but I've been robbed, I've been cheated, things have been stolen from wow. me. But I'm grateful that my parents actually released me to come here. And I always tell people that I know my parents don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> the flip side of it is that they're healthy. My parents are engaged in the community. My mom is still working. They've got friends in Singapore that I know. And so if I need anything, I will just call my dad's friend. Hello, what's happening? And, and that is something that I will never take for granted. Like the only reason why I can do what I'm doing here is because they are well. Uh, I don't have to, you know, go home and, and say I... But like I said, if anything should happen, I'm there. But that's why I'm really grateful that everything is, is well. And I think sometimes we take for granted all the things that are going well in our lives. Yes. We look at the big... Yes. We celebrate the big things. Oh, I got a promotion. Oh, I got... Uh, I'm grateful for a car. I'm grateful for a house. I'm grateful for... My, those are great stuff. But I know that it's the mundane. It's the small things that... Um, even health like we can never take our health for granted as well Definitely. and so I, I'm grateful that I'm well I don't want to be sick here because the medical facilities here are terrible uh, <laughs> so I'm I'm really grateful for that but these things we, we take for granted we don't we, I don't think we we verbalize it enough and mm. I think like for you writing down is is, is amazing I have I have journals I, I don't write I don't write every day. I don't do, I don't have the discipline to do what you do. But I do write. I have a hard copy journal. I also have a blog online that's private. Um, but I think it's a very good practice. Interestingly, you said, uh, you know, you are thankful for your parents that are well to allow you to release you to do the things that you do. And you know that taking care of your health is important. And being an entrepreneur, you need to take care of yourself. Right, because if you're not healthy, uh, you're down, you can't do much things. How's your wellness or nutrition journey been like for you? I know that uh, just speaking to you uh, past few times, you have a certain discovery perhaps you can share with us. I've always had an issue with eczema. And um, and when I was younger, I've had like the whole thing, you know, asthma, um, sinus and all that kind of thing so it's, it's my immune system so I know that I have an issue with my immune system but growing up and all that right if you I mean if you spend more time with me then you know that I love my sweets sugar is like my thing I don't even eat dinner and I don't even need to eat proper food I just need desserts like if I go to the buffet desserts first please because I'm worried that I'll be too full and I cannot eat my dessert um, and then and I, everybody's been telling me, go easy on the sugar, go easy on the sugar. But then when nothing happens, you're like, ah, you know, I can handle my sugar, don't worry. Um, so last year, what happened was that um, it started out with, when I was in Singapore, I had a very bad bout of gastric. It was so bad that I could even barely stand and I was wobbling all the way. Like my mom had to help me to go to a clinic. But we know that medicine is all symptomatic. They only treat your symptoms. So what is the problem? Yeah, oh, you yeah. got gastric. Okay, here is some painkillers or here is some, uh, they gave me all the, what is that? For uh, probiotics. So the, the doctor gave me probiotics and, and all the kind of things, send you home. And you just treat the symptoms. You don't solve the problem. So when I came back to Cambodia, I realized that I was having a lot of other issues as well. Um, I, and I just said that it's the, the 40-year-old thing. But uh, uh, I felt that my hormones had gone out of whack. I felt that everything was going wrong. And then I was starting to wonder, is it a thyroid issue? Uh, I, was, I was water retained. I was bloated. You know, my skirt, I couldn't even buckle my skirt. And that was when I was like, oh my gosh, I have to do something about this now. I cannot let this happen to me. It wasn't, it wasn't that I was getting fat. It was that I cannot wear my clothes anymore. That means I have to go and get a new wardrobe. No. <laughs> the gastric did not go away so I was in pain all the time I went to see a Chinese and like I said medical here is very difficult very challenging doctors cannot make a good diagnosis and so I went to see a Chinese acupuncturist and, and I was being needled like it was painful by the way like my wow. acupuncture is, is painful so it was my it's my um, abdomen right because it was gastric uh -huh. so she was bent over on me she was sticking all these needles in and she was twisting and turning it and I was like oh my god it's, it's painful and she was looking over me and then she's like hey you need to breathe can you breathe 
so pain right so I was holding my breath lah. then after that when I went home right, I texted my mom. I said hey, this Chinese um, physician right, told me I should breathe yeah if not I would have seen Jesus already because I was like <laughs> in pain and then I realised that I need to do something about it hmm. so I went to research and I think that being in Cambodia and being in this situation I forced myself to do be my own doctor to do a lot of diagnosis myself and so I, I was I was crazy I went online I read everything I'm like what is happening is it my thyroid is it my hormone uh, estrogen blame it on estrogen blame everything on estrogen <laughs> um, and and then I just said that I did not want to be in this situation so bad that I just have to change so then I started exercising as well oh my gosh I I mean, like, because I never had, I never really had a weight issue to contend with. Lah. I was never that hard up, you know, on, on this thing. But it's not about weight anymore. It's about health. And so I was, I was crazy. Like, I was doing all these exercises um, from home because I didn't want to go to a gym. Um, but I also changed my, my eating habits a lot. So when I first started, it was the most painful decision that I had to make. I chose the paleo diet. And I chose paleo um, because... It was very close to the AIP, the autoimmune paleo diet. And because I had a lot of um, allergies um, mm-hmm. and because of my eczema and all that, I thought, and again, you do your research, right? Not every diet works for everybody and keto doesn't yeah. work for everybody as well. So I chose, I, I did my research and I chose to do this and it was so difficult. Paleo means no gluten, no milk, no sugar. Oh my God. It, was, it was crazy. In the beginning, I told myself, I'm just going to do this for 30 days. And even then, right, I wasn't strict. So I always call myself a pseudo-paleo. So I, I, I drink lattes. So now instead of latte, I will drink black coffee and I just add a little bit of milk. Right? I mean, like, that, that's, you know, that's the... I cut out bread, rice, noodles, um, biscuits, no, just no snacking. Sugar, um, sorry, fruits has a lot of sugar, but I allow myself to eat that. Um, but I always tell people that if you saw the amount of chocolates and the amount of desserts that I used to eat before and what I'm eating now, it's a world of difference. And I think that we know our bodies better than anybody else and you adjust it according to yourself and what fits your lifestyle and your thing. And and I'm not that kind of person who will be an idiot when I go out with friends. I'm like, oh, I'm not eating this, I'm not eating this, I'm not eating this. Then why are you out with us? For us, we're Asians. Food is a very communal, it's a very community thing. So like I said, I'm not going to be, I don't want to be stupid and make things difficult for, for people. I think we can adjust and all that. But uh, like we were talking about earlier, it's about progress. Yes. So it's not about me picking all these things, it's about progress. And yeah. I tell you, I've done this for over a year just over a year and previously right every month i'll get migraines they're hormone related so it's it's with with the onset of my period or it's it's estrogen related and since then until now right i have never taken a painkiller i get dull pain sometimes but nothing that a a nap won't help or if i i will just stay away from the sun and whatever and a few hours later um i I don't know, just auto-recover and all that, but I've never had to take a painkiller for my migraine since July last year. When you see these kind of progress, that's the motivation that keeps you going. And so, I mean, diets are, are difficult. I don't know how you I keep... would consider myself flexible dieter, okay. uh, like you say. It's difficult for us to be uh, strict in a sense where you yeah. totally disregard your social life. I yeah. used to be, when I was uh, first on it, and I was on no carb diet, a high-protein diet, and I would choose my food, and then I figured out it's expensive to uh, maintain such, and it makes me unhappy. Yeah. So we need to figure out what's happening within yeah. ourselves, and there's plenty of ways for you to get yourself into a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. But you know your body best, yeah, and you make it into a lifestyle, something that you can sustain. I, I think... Tired is not about uh, reaching that place, but rather, and I often say this, that it, it is a journey that we go through more than anything else. And like you said, you figure it out yourself. You started with 30 days and then you made it into a lifestyle and you don't 
allow it to affect your social life. And that, that that's an important thing. You know, being Asians, weddings happen, birthdays yeah. happen, every other celebration happens in Singapore. How many celebrations do we have? Even though I'm not a Christian, I celebrate Christmas too <laughs> with food, Chinese New Year. So with all this that's happening, for sure, we need to allow ourselves some fun and, and we'll be okay. Only if you know what's happening within your body and you're conscious. And that's what you did. You were conscious about what's happening to my body. Can I take care of it? And medication will only solve the symptoms, yeah. not solve the issue it's itself. It's what we put into our body. I think that's more important. Everything that I do and everything that we do, I believe is the same for you as well. It's done out of conviction. And when you do things out of conviction, right, then you don't struggle with it anymore. Like I don't struggle with alcohol. Um, you want to drink, you can drink all you want. I don't want to kill my liver. Because at that point in time, right, I was also so worried that I had issues with my liver. So I was taking all these um, dandelion pills and whatever, whatever. But uh, uh, then I decided that liver is very important to me. I want to take care of my liver. I don't need alcohol. And so when, I think when you've got that conviction, right, you, you, it's not a struggle. So you don't go out yep. and you're like, wow, I'm, I mean, I'm sitting here and everybody is, is, you know, having their champagne and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, it's, it's not for me. You want to drink? Please be my guest. Yes, yes. Because it, it becomes a lifestyle for you, for yourself. Yeah. yeah. You're not worried about the choices that other people make. Yeah, for me, I can go without uh, my favorite curry puff, but I'll allow myself to eat some curry puff sometimes. <laughs> so it's okay. I can do without curry puff. Yes, yeah. correct, correct. And I also want to say, like, I always, um, even until now, I say, who is that person who says that if you quit sugar for 30 days, all the cravings will go away? That's rubbish. I mean, you can never get rid of the sugar craving. You can enjoy it still. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think what has happened to us is that if we are more empowered with the choices that we are making. Yeah, I like that, that word. I cannot live without sugar. Yeah. I tell my coaches, instead of thinking about that you cannot, now you have the power to eat yeah, it yeah, yeah. you That's want good. to have it. Yeah. yeah. So like for yourself, you do allow yourself, you know, some sugar, some uh cookies or some cakes. Do you allow yeah. yourself some cakes still? I mean, we're here for the long run, right? We're here, uh, yes. we've got to be able to um yeah last last that long lah. and so we have to make decisions that um will help us to go that far and if we keep doing this to ourselves then it's not we're not gonna we're not gonna make it yeah definitely i'm gonna look forward to me having my cake on my 50th birthday <laughs> yeah yeah for sure for before sure. i ask you the last question uh before i wrap up this conversation i just want to take the time to acknowledge you i want to acknowledge you for the great work that you're doing taking on a path uh, that is not easy uh to pursue your passion to impact a community and in your case uh, at this season a uh, community in cambodia and just talking to you i can understand where that passion is coming from and where it is flowing to us. And I want to acknowledge you also for living your life big and loud. I love watching your <laughs> answer stories <laughs> because you make things interesting. Um, and that's the way to lead a great life is that you turn something that is mundane into a journey of discovery. Yeah, you yeah, said yeah. it yourself earlier on. You know, so thank you for showing me and showing your followers uh, that aspect of appreciating life and that's what I want to acknowledge you with. This oh, conference. thank you. Thank you. It's been so fun chatting with you. And that's why I, I totally love conversations um, with you, with our college friends, you know, different people, different perspectives. And I think, like I said, we've got similar values, mindsets. Uh, and then it's about just learning from each other. And, and I appreciate the peer um, mentoring that is happening, right? Like we're encouraged encouraging each other sometimes it's very difficult i think you know entrepreneurship is very difficult like yeah. and there are many times i also ask myself like oh this is so tough like i don't want to do this anymore but then the encouragement comes when you see someone who's doing the same thing as you are um and we're all being real you know the struggle is real and then you're like oh okay so if he's doing it as well if he's doing it as well i think it's okay like, it's not that bad well, uh, if any of the viewers want to connect with you, uh, are you on Instagram only at chocoholic.mel? Uh, are you yes. on Twitter, Facebook, Facebook. or Snapchat? 
no they Twitter and no Snapchat. I'm not that savvy, <laughs> I think. So they can uh, connect with you on your Facebook and also at your Instagram. Yes, for okay. sure, so for sure. We will. I will leave the links uh, in the show notes later. Okay, so Mel, before I let you go, I've got. Uh, I always ask this question to all my guests here. What makes a great life? Mm. Wow, this is actually such a difficult question to answer. I think um, a great life is just doing something that um, you really enjoy and you're passionate about and knowing your strengths and being able to use your strengths to contribute to. um, Society is a big word. Say contribute to your world, just the world around you, whatever that looks like. Yeah. It was a pleasure talking to you, Mel. Yes, you so the pleasure is mine. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Low Conversations. It was great talking to Melissa. Now, the path of entrepreneurship is not easy, but some of us have taken that leap of faith to do it, and I believe uh, you can too. But only if you believe it so. I hope that you have gained much from this uh, episode today, and if you have, please uh, leave a comment. I would love to hear from you. Do also give us a thumbs up <laughs> and share it with anyone whom you think would benefit from this conversation. Make sure also that you tag me on my Instagram at I am Ashley and you can also find me on Facebook at Education Living and I Coach Ali. And so this has been Ali here. I'm telling you, let's go out there. Let's live. Bye. Amazing life. Cheers, everybody.